Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemist Tarot, serving tarot straight up. So, <clears throat> I just posted a video on TikTok, so if you don't follow me there, go and watch it. Um, it was in regards to somebody that you had a connection with um, that could be coming back in. Um, because they've done a lot of transformation, a lot of healing work, a lot of focusing on themselves. Um, and this is somebody who's gone through a lot, a lot of trauma, whether it's debt, whether bad relationships, it, it could be all of the above. Um, <clears throat> so if you guys haven't followed me on TikTok on live for the last, like about probably like a year, the beginning of 2021, I was pushing and getting a ton of messages that a significant other, um, or a soul connection would be probably coming in around, um, the end of winter, early spring. So kind of that March, April timeframe. Now, this is gonna be a general reading, so this is not gonna be for everyone. It will not be for everyone, but for a lot of you, it could be that around March and April, and it does feel more like this year, that you could start to get, maybe it's reconnection, communication with this person, um, and again, they feel like somebody maybe you know from your past, but it didn't really take off, the relationship kinda of sizzled, or the communication was like faulty, or whatever the case is. So, for whatever reason, I feel really drawn to do this video, so we're going to. So. I've talked enough. Let's go ahead and pull some more cards. And again, go to my TikTok um, and check the video out because it will kind of give you a little bit more context. The cards, the people who are featured were the Empress and the Emperor and the Ten of Cups was in between them. And um, the beginning of the, the first card that we laid out was the Ace of Swords in reverse. So there was, again, delays, false communication, false starts, um, not the right timing. But these two individuals look like they're coming together in union, okay? So let's see. And this does feel romantic in nature. I usually really try to qualify when I talk about relationships because that can be across the board, right? But this does feel romantic in nature. Okay, so we'll just take that one because that flew out. For those of you going to ask, this is the Bianco uh, Bianco Nero Tarot. It's this black and white deck. Really pretty. It's one of my favorites. What else do we need to know? Sorry about this connection. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, so the energy around this individual... And it could be man or woman, but the energy feels more masculine, okay? So remember, when I say masculine energy or feminine energy, it doesn't necessarily mean gender. Okay, so interesting enough, the first card that flew out was the um, Nine of Wands. Like I said, this person has kind of gone through this uphill battle and is still going through it. Um, and it's been a couple things, lack of belief, self a lack of self-confidence, um, issues with finances has been a big one. Um, you know, just like a lot of people, and you don't need cards to tell you this, when a lot of people are going through kind of financial hardship or a shift in their financial, you know, kind of part of their life, it's really hard to focus and put your whole heart into other areas because, you know, whether we like it, you know, money is, yes, it's energy, but it is necessary. We have bills to pay. We have food to eat. We have things that we need to buy, right? So, there certainly could be that there was a shift in direction in finances or a job change um, or even job loss, which is always nerve wracking. This person has been through quite a bit. And it's almost like spirit keeps saying like the hits keep on coming. Like it's almost like one thing after another this person has gone through and continues to experience. So it's like taking one step forward and 10 steps back type of a uh, situation. And that can be really deflating. Um, to one's ego, to one's motivation, belief in oneself. Um, this is somebody who definitely, I would say, an outsider or somebody, unless they know them really, really well, would probably think that this person has their stuff together, they're very stoic, kind of emotional-less, like they don't really talk about their feelings a lot. Um, they're very focused on creating stability. So even when it looks like they're, even when their life is in upheaval or kind of having, they're going through havoc, to an outsider, it wouldn't seem that way. Um, they're probably, they seem very quiet. Um, this isn't, this is a person who doesn't talk a lot. So they, they, unless you know them, unless they really trust you, they're not going to tell you what's going on and they're probably not going to give you details or parts of their life. 
Um, and I feel like for some of you, this isn't, so, some of you might have been in a full-fledged relationship, but I feel like a lot of you, this is, was like an intense connection that never really took off or got lifted off the ground. So it's always kind of like, it was like this pending feeling like something could happen, but nothing actually has. And that could shift. The energy that I was getting, again, like I said early in the, in the video, March and April feel like the time frame that this could happen. Now, for some of you, that could be next year. I don't know. For every single one of you, it's going to be very different. It's hard for me to channel who potentially could watch this. Um, but it definitely feels like the end of winter, early spring. And I have been, and again, if you've been following me on my TikTok lives, you'll know that I've been pulling that energy very significantly. Um, and that's kind of that, like, you know, um, end of Pisces, you know, kind of that really dreamy, subconscious you know, deep emotions into like that fiery, you know, spring equinox where we hit into like airy season and it's the beginning of the astrological new year and, and all of that good stuff, right? This is somebody who, um, very disciplined. So it's almost like being really frustrated when you do all the right things and things haven't manifested yet. I don't necessarily see that this is an individual who is super connected like to spirituality, like they don't understand some of like the words or they be like divination might be odd for them or that kind of makes them a little nervous. Um, they're, they were brought up in a very structured type of like belief system. So it's not that they're not open, but I, I feel like until they have the right person in front of them explaining things, they're going to think like the spirituality stuff is a little off kilter, you know? This is somebody who will never ask for help. They're not ever going to um, be the victim. They're always going to figure out a way to make things work, to get things going, to like fix their problem. So they're not somebody who is going to be real vocal. Um, they carry a lot of pain and kind of suffering to, and they keep it to themselves, a lot of stress. Um, and again, to them, I, I feel like they just don't want to bother people with their problems and they don't want to come off as weak because weakness is like a downward slope of failure. And that's not the case at all. But like, again, they were brought up in that structured environment where that's what they think. This person isn't going to give up. They feel at times like they want to, like they just want to say, you know, F it. I just want to sell everything go and do whatever and kind of be very, um, you know, free and I'll just figure it out. But a part of them won't let them do that because they're too, like, they're, they're structured in their disciplines where they can't let themselves have that freedom and they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't know what to do with it necessarily. This is someone with the two of swords is starting to really understand and come into, coming into like the, the understanding that there is more that meets there's more that meets the more that meets the eye. Is that the right saying? You know what I'm trying to get at. There's more that meets the eye. I, I think I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, but you know what I'm getting at? Like, so there's, it's almost like they have this unknowing, this unspeakable feeling that they have this connection. Maybe, you know, they have some intuitive abilities, like psychic abilities and everyone does, but I feel like they've like been so turned off to that kind of stuff that it kind of freaks them out that they're starting to maybe get premonitions or their dreams are becoming very vivid or they're starting to like maybe see reoccurring numbers or they're starting to hear things. It's almost like they keep telling themselves that's just a coincidence. And for people who have kind of gone through multiple awakenings knows that there are no coincidences. They're usually messages, but it's like that this, it's like a shit passing in the night. Like they don't, they haven't clicked and understood that yet. But this is somebody who's starting to tap in and realizing that, yes, their situation is what it is, but they have to also start to learn to trust themselves more. I think that this is somebody who has gone through hardship because they've done everything that everyone else wants them to do or thinks that they should do rather than what they really are meant to do. So, you know, that could be you know, staying in a job or a career or, you know, living in a certain place or whatever the case is. It's like they, they, they are always appeasing other people because that's what they're supposed to do. That's like what they're, you know, 
a good fit for. And deep down, that's not what they, that's not what gives them enjoyment and fulfillment. And again, if this is like professional related to this individual, this is someone who's a very quick learner, can probably figure anything out and is very um, good at picking things up as they go. But again, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you love it. The more and more this person starts to really work through some of this trauma and really hard emotion. And again, for a lot of you who have gone through an awakening or, you know, kind of like realization, a spiritual realization or your energy is shifting, you, it, it can be really nerve wracking. It can be like you've been flipped over upside down and you're trying to like see things from a different lens and it can be really hard at times. So imagine you kind of have already gone through that maybe once or, or many times. And this is someone who's like first go around and they could be a little bit older in age. So again, it's like very much like it's going to rock their world. So I feel like a lot of them are kind of like, again, trying to like figure out what did I just see? What did I just hear? What did I just experience? Oh my gosh, that's too weird. The coincidence, you know, all of that. They're really, it's making them uncomfortable, but also there's no growth in the comfort zone. So this is why this is a little bit challenging for this person. And again, um, you know, we have the the justice card and the nine of cups. So the justice is all about re kind of balancing and re looking at their life and trying to figure out what actually do they want? What is going to bring them happy, um, enjoyment and fulfillment in their life? You know, the nine of cups is a wish card and it's that last, it's that card right before they hit that 10 of cups. And remember in the TikTok video that I put up, they, the empress and the emperor were, were on the outside of the 10 of cups, right? So there's this progression. Two nines are a strong indicator that, again, this cycle that this person is going through is close to an end. Um, and this is somebody who's starting to realize that there's um, more out there and there's more experiences. There's more than fitting in a category, you know, doing things that only appease others. This is somebody who's now starting to kind of be willing to risk more in order to make themselves happier. So the reward to, to please themselves is now starting to, you know, tip the scale a little bit. Um, whereas they were always trying to keep things even, really make sure that everyone else around them was like good, comfortable. Why would you do that? You know, that doesn't make sense for you. But again, when people, when you want to make adjustments in your life and people are always like pushing on you or telling you you shouldn't do it, it's probably because they don't know how to do it or they feel uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that that's the wrong thing for you. So again, I feel like the scales are starting to kind of tilt and they're balancing things out for them and what makes sense for their life and their goals and what's going to make them ultimately happy, not only for the short term, but the long term, right? They're starting to think in that way. Like, why would I continue, you know, doing this job or be in this relationship or, you know, pretend that this doesn't bother me? Like, they're really starting to evaluate all areas of their life. And again, by doing that and putting things kind of like re, and it's almost like they're re- starting or recalibrating a lot of things, which again, doing that all at once, like a lot of change at once can make people, it can unnerve people. The best of people who are even the most flexible and agile and roll with the punches, that can unwind anyone. And you know, the card on the bottom of the deck is the king of pentacles. So this is definitely, as this person is going to be able to, um, you know, start to build stability, but in the way that makes sense for them and also create more income and financial, you know, um, uh, financial happiness, because again, this person's finances were very much up and down. And like I said before, when your finances are up and down, it's hard to put really focus in your love or your relationships. It's hard to do that. So, because this is somebody who, again, brought up in that structured mentality, and it could be brought up in a, in a structure where they're like that toxic masculinity where you have to be the boss, you have to take care of everyone. And again, it could be male or female, but it's still that mentality of like, you have to do it all. You have to carry a lot of weight on your shoulders. And this person has, but they haven't, they didn't need to do it, right? So this King of Pentacles is all about, you know, even this person could be going into business for themselves or, you know, doing something that's a little bit more entrepreneurial or it's something that they feel like they have more control or power, you know, over more autonomy where before maybe there was like, they were like, they felt like they were in a cog in a wheel, you know, and they didn't have a lot of freedom or didn't have a lot of say or what they thought and felt wasn't taken into consideration. So that weighs on a person, right? 
What else? What else? What else? Oop, that's too many cards. Sorry that when there's too many cards that come out at once, like that's not, we don't want that. Oh, wow. Okay. I say that and then the four cards came out. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So we have two kings here. And again, I don't necessarily feel like it's multiple people. Not in this scenario. I do feel like this is kind of a, an individual who's starting to peel back the layers and seeing different aspects of themselves and different parts of their personality. So again, this is somebody, and this is the King of Swords in reverse. So it could be an Aquarius or this is an in individual who has strong uh, characteristics of an Aquarius. Doesn't have to be though. So please don't just focus on the, the Zodiac sign. Aquarius can be very detached, kind of um, um, unemotional. And I said from the beginning that this is somebody who's probably very stoic, doesn't really share their feelings and emotions. It's really hard for them to do that because, and it does kind of connect in how they grew up, that this is a child, you know, from like their child age, being told like not to be too feminine or not to like too many things that are like too girly, very, you know, like kind of that toxic masculinity. So this is somebody who is in their head quite a bit. They overthink everything. They are very, sometimes they want to do something and they want to execute, they want to put action, but then they start to overthink and then they stop themselves. So they're their own worst enemy at times. Um, this is somebody who has probably gone through maybe a little bit of loss in their life, you know, maybe early on or throughout where it's really made them feel lack of confident or lack, have lack of confidence, excuse me, in certain areas. So there could have been maybe some legal issues, some money issues where they like, you know, kind of put them on their heels a little bit. And again, you know, the King of Swords is not someone who can get knocked off their rocker very easily. Like this is, so again, when you have somebody who's very sturdy, stable, very confident in themselves and very focused, and at least they appear that way, and then they get kind of taken off their game unexpectedly, that can throw somebody for a loop. Um... This is somebody who's going within big time, the hermit card, Virgo energy, very much thinking, trying to figure out next steps. This is somebody, again, the King of Swords too is a very wise energy. This is not somebody who is, who is immature emotionally. <coughs> They're actually very wise and they give sage advice out to a lot of people, but sometimes they have a hard time taking their own advice, don't we all? But this is somebody who knows what they're what they need to do. It's almost like they need to follow their their inner compass, their like the north star. Like they need to figure out what their path is and follow it wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly, excuse me. There's a lot of decisions this person's going to have to be making here relatively soon. What they want, what they don't, what they're willing to give up, what they're not willing to give up. Again, and some tower moments are on the way. This is anytime this person, I think this person is is starting to see a pattern, okay? They're, they're starting to notice a pattern where if I continue to juggle everything that is not a priority for my life, that is when, and I refuse to see like the push and the shift that the energy that the universe is sending my way to move in the direction I need to go in. If I continue to overlook it, choose free will that I'm just going to purely ignore it out of bliss and, or, you know, I'm too scared to make a move even though I need to. And again, the Hermit card is all about knowing that you, knowing the path you need to take. It's just trying to figure out how. So if this person is starting to realize, hey, if I continue to ignore the feeling, the gut, the drive, the, the path that I really am meant to follow, I, my life is going to be turned upside down again. I don't think I can go through that again. So there is, a, I feel like this is why this person is starting to have some major realizations that the power has always been in their hands they just have to be brave enough to actually take those steps and believe in themselves that no matter where they go and how they do it and the path that they choose they're always going to end up in the right place and you know this is somebody who needs to understand also and is probably starting to gonna well probably will understand this once they feel like there's more connectivity in what they're doing that everything that is meant for them will always be for them yeah, I, again, this is somebody who is certainly going through some more lessons. They're not fully 
It's like, it's not, they're not fully there, but I think that they're starting to understand like, oh my gosh, because I ignored this gut feeling or because I chose to do something that I was more comfortable doing and not like pushing myself out of my comfort zone, that's when my life kind of got flipped all over the place and I, I need to start paying attention. So again, I do think that this is somebody who is becoming a lot more aware of the energy around them, which is good, which is good. But again, they can't put the connection pieces and they don't understand exactly what's happening. Meaning that they don't understand that like it's an awakening. That's, that's what I'm getting at. So the high priestess flew out. Again, I was talking about that intuition, their guiding light. So they're starting to start to pay attention that the things that, you know, have bothered them in the past have been based on their own choices and decisions because they've ignored that intuitive part of themselves. And this is huge. This, again, this is not a, an easy thing. Once they start to realize that Knight of Wands, that energy, they're going to be able to have a lot more um, fearlessness and confidence just to move forward. And again, they might be trying something that they're, they're able to be a little bit more creative and step into their authentic self and do things that really make sense for them or, or make them happy. And then you, there you go. The Three of Cups, reconnecting with like-minded individuals. And again, this feels really strongly in March and April. So for some of you, that's going to be the case. And for some of you, it won't. But um, once they start to have more confidence and belief and understanding who they are and what they want, and, they, and they're fine with that, and it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or says, that Three of Cups, that's reunion, that's celebration, that's reconnectivity. And again, for some of you, that can be with you. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this reading and, you know, just keep me, if you feel confident and you, you're okay and to leave a comment and keep me updated, go for it because I'd love to know if this is happening for you. So have a wonderful rest of the day and thank you so much for watching.